Ms. Fatma Almari, NLP Master Practitioner, Coach and Hypnotherapist, Mr. Nasir Al Yami, Hypnotherapist, NLP Coach, Laughter Yoga Teacher, Chairman C. Sundar Murani, uh, my colleagues in the Managing Committee and respected members of the chapter, a very good morning and Namaskar to all of you. I warmly welcome all of you to our seminar today on Time for Holistic Wellness May Tour. And I also thank you for coming here on Saturday early morning. Uh, and we are also thankful to Ms. Fatma and Mr. Nasir for taking out the time on Saturday that too early morning to address our members. Can we have a big round of applause for them? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker, Ms. Fatma, will teach us the technique to deliberate with your mind and soul. We will also learn how our mind works and how to speak its language. Today, we are going to have a wow moment and we will feel after this session as if we just woken up from a dream. We will feel ultimately empowered as a human being and finally today, you, we will have a manual for our wonderful brain and our neurology system, how it works. In today's modern life, we are always under pressure and stress due to demanding and competitive corporate life. So we need to relearn how to laugh out loud. I use the word relearn here because when we were a kid, we were laughing loudly without any hitch or hesitation. So now we need to relearn with the help of Mr. Nasir, who is going to teach us today laughter yoga. By the way, I think Mr. Nasir mentioned somewhere, I was reading one of the articles yesterday, and he mentioned that laughing can burn up to 50 calories in just 10 minutes. So we need to laugh as much as possible. Now I would like to thank our principal sponsors, Terry, Lulu, Ifco and Danu, our platinum sponsors, UHY James and HLB Hunt. I also thank our media partner, Khalis Times, institutional partner, Delhi Private School, and banking partner, Bank of Baroda. Before I sign off, I wish each one of you and your family a happy, healthy and prosperous New Year 2022. Now I would like to request our Chairman C.A. Sundar Nurani to deliver his welcome address. Uh, first of all, uh, let me wish you all a wonderful, happy and prosperous uh, New Year 2022. Uh, we have been going through a uh, difficult uh, phase uh, in 2020 to start with the uh, coronavirus. 2021 was, you know, we did an amazing job. Uh, we did a lot of physical events and 2022, alhamdulillah, we are starting with the physical event. In 2021, we were not able to do uh, the physical events uh, much. We started from June 2020, uh, June 2021 because of the, uh, uh, the situation. We should uh, support, we, we should thank the rulers of Dubai and uh, the United Arab Emirates uh, for providing this opportunity because uh, when the entire world was going through a kind of turmoil, we were able to meet physically and we were able to interact. This is uh, something, you know, which is amazing which happened in Dubai. Uh, so thanks to uh, I mean, uh, the rulers of Dubai and uh, United Arab Emirates and the citizens as well. Uh, Madam Fatima al memory. Uh, Mr. Nasser al Miami and Madam Sabia, we welcome all of you and thank you for taking time on Saturday morning to enlighten us uh, with the wellness. And as Hari mentioned, uh, we, we uh, I think, forgot how to laugh. So today, Mr. Uh, uh, the speaker will remind us about you know the very effective way of uh, laughing. And I was also amazed by the fact that you know 250 calories uh, Hari mentioned you know we are going to lose because if we laugh properly. Uh, I am also very happy to see a large number of members. We were expecting much more probably because of the uh, Mr. Omicron. Uh, people are a bit skeptical about uh, coming. Uh, but don't worry uh, if uh, everybody is uh, properly vaccinated with all the uh, efficient uh, uh, add-on add, add to vaccination that is boosters. Uh, we will be you know, able to overcome this situation very soon. Uh, I should uh, also thank uh, Jay Prakash. Uh, 
Ah, yeah. Jay, he was instrumental in uh, coordinating with the speakers uh, and this is the first uh, physical event for us in 2022. We are not starting with technical thing, we are not starting with money making. We are starting with uh, wellness and well-being and how to laugh because th these are very important. If you are well, then you make uh, the money out of it. Uh, I am also very happy to let you know that uh, we have crossed uh, 2,500 members uh, for year 2021. That is a amazing number. And uh, yes, this will not happen without the you know the uh, continuous effort uh, of the executive committee members and the uh, drive behind this uh, by the treasurer Manoj Sri Manoj Agarwal. Uh, and I would also thank all of you because all, each of you would have contributed. Uh, uh, for the increase in this number. I have only one request to make to all of you. Uh, because you know that uh, we put a lot of efforts uh, to get the CA qualification. It was not easy. We spent around three years of entrepreneurship training. And uh, with all the hard work, we got this degree. So if you are not updating your CPE, uh, that means the institute is going to remove you from the membership. So this many uh, in Dubai, we have around 8,000 plus chartered opponents in Dubai but we have a membership of 2,500. So my request to all of you, whoever you know, who are not the members of the chapter, please tell them to join the uh, initiative of the chapter. January 1 is the first day to pay the membership for uh, 2021, 2022. So they can join and take the benefits of uh, the continuous learning what we provide. And once they join the chapter, you know, their CP is automatically getting updated. So this is the best way to maintain the membership. Not only that, uh, network is, uh, network at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, some of the upcoming events, uh, we are planning to have the annual general meeting inshallah on 26th of March 2022. Uh, the XCOM has unanimously elected uh, CA Surinth Jain, uh, the past president, uh, past chairman as the election officer. It is going to happen inshallah in this venue itself. Uh, it will start from 9 o'clock, uh, uh, I mean 11 o'clock in the morning, voting will start till 9 p.m. Same way we did uh, last year. And uh, on March 1st, we are going to have the International Women's Day event, uh, which, we, which is uh, scheduled to be out of Dubai Expo 2020 Indian Pavilion. Uh, there are a lot of uh, speakers which we are contact I mean, we are contacting, and uh, it will be a hybrid event uh, because Indian Pavilion will not be able to accommodate 500 plus members. So it will be uh, few members will attend physically, few will watch the live event as well. Uh, then on uh, February 5, we have planning the uh, budget event. Uh, the tax guru, uh, we call him uh, the uh, Bhishma Vidalamaha of taxation. Uh, he has, uh, uh, you know, joyfully agreed to come to Dubai. Uh, this was, this happened in November, but considering the present situation, uh, we are just <coughs> contemplating whether we need to have that event in a hybrid mode. Uh, because for the tax event, we know that traditionally more than 600 to 700 people will do come and attend. Uh, then uh, uh, on uh, uh, we, we are also planning the IFRS uh, session and sustainability session. And uh, you all know that the new commercial law, the old commercial commercial law has been replaced by the new commercial law. Starting January 2, 2022, uh, the new law is uh, implemented. So I am talking to some of the lawyers who can come and deliver this session. Uh, probably it will happen somewhere in uh, Fe February. Uh, uh, we also have the international conference in Mumbai, which is going to happen in uh, uh, January 2022. It was supposed to be a physical event, but considering the uh, spread of Omicron in India, that has become the uh, uh, virtual event. So that has given an opportunity to all of you to register and you know attend this event. Uh, uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank all of you again and uh, wish you all the very best. Again, Happy New Year. We have done an amazing job in 2021. Inshallah, I am hopeful that in 2022 also we will do a very good job. Uh, what we need to remember is uh, it is not uh, how much uh, network you have, it is not like how much money you have, how much money you have, what impact you are creating on the society. That is what is very important. I was going through the profile of uh, Fatima Ji and you know Nasser. I have seen that you know how passionate they are in terms of giving back to the society. So, uh, uh, whatever we are going to learn, we have to uh, probably, we, we are putting in the YouTube also immediately after the session, because this program has to be seen by all the members, not only the members, but their children and uh, you know, their uh, family as well. So, we will, uh, immediately after the event, we will put it in YouTube. So, please encourage uh, uh, the members who could not attend, 
and your family and friends to watch this in YouTube because some great learning is going to happen today. So with that, uh, I hand over the podium to Secretary Ji to take the proceeding further. Thank you very much. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind and be led by the dreams in your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, can anyone tell me what is the meaning of paradigm? What is that word, sir? Paradigm. P A R A D I G M. We call it paradigm shift, you know, in the. Internet. Yes, yes, paradigm. So I, I can tell you actually, act, actually, as per the Bob Proctor, what he mentioned about the paradigm. Even I was not aware of this word paradigm, and uh, I was not knowing the meaning very well. Uh, but in the words of Bob Proctor, he mentioned a paradigm is like a mental program that has been installed in your subconscious mind, not in the conscious mind, we have subconscious mind as well. So it goes in your subconscious, yeah, you can sub continue, sir. Yeah, can subconscious mind, which has almost actually complete control over your behavior or habits, like for example, we wake up in the morning, suppose 6 or 7 o'clock, whatever, we brush our teeth, we have our breakfast, we go to the office, then again we have lunch, then uh, come back from the office, have the dinner in the night, and then sleep. So this is a program actually which has been, you know, like installed in our system. We don't need any sort of timetable to do all these activities. So this paradigm, even when you go to office and you do your work in a like in your comfort zone, you are doing whatever routine work is there and we are not thinking, you know, to change our paradigm or shift our paradigm because what is happening, if we are in our comfort zone, then we are not going to grow from there and we always complain that why our salary is not increased because you are doing the same work what you have been doing for the couple of years. So whether you have an experience of one year or ten years, we have to think because ten years we are doing the same job again and again. So we need to learn actually how to shift our paradigm. And uh, today, I think uh, Fatma is there, our first speaker, who is going to talk about heart, mind, and soul. So I think we will learn the steps how to shift our paradigm. And to introduce her, I would like to invite our ESCOM member, C. A. Manohar Kumar Pillai, uh, sorry, Palerichal, <laughs> to introduce. Uh, Ms. Fatma, over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy uh, this early morning, very cold climate, and uh, very nice. So, just a brief introduction uh, for Secretary Sir Vardari Kibor about the event, what is going to happen today. A happy person is not a person in certain set of circumstances, but in certain, with a certain attitude, he is the happy person. And when we look into NFP, NFP is an attitude and a methodology, if not a degree, and not a trial of techniques it leaves behind. Today, and next one hour, we are going to have a wonderful experience of from an expert speaker, an expert on the subject. My responsibility is to give an introduction to the speaker. Ms. Fatma Almari is a research associate in Dubai Tourism, certified NLP master practitioner, coach, and hypnotherapist specialized in change presentation. In her current role, she manages strategic projects that are aligned with the city goals and contribute to the economic acceleration. She graduated first rank from Said University, <laughs> Bachelor of Business Science degree with a concentration in, uh, in finance. Farma worked for City Private Bank as an investment analyst, part of the Global Investment Lab Unit. It was a challenging experience that stretched her understanding of the complexity of investments. 
Fatma was participant in the in International Visitor Leadership Program, that is IVLP, a regional program that focused on women, political and communi uh, community leaders founded by the U.S. State Department. As an advocate for positivity and general well-being, Fatma recently founded Bold Blue Management, where she works with clients and coaches them one-on-one -on -one to develop and execute strategies to rather, sorry, uh, uh, strategies to reach the desired outcomes. Great, ma'am. So we are looking forward to get a great experience. Please come on stage. First of all, Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful for the team who organized all of this uh, to have us here in these strange circumstances we find ourselves tonight. What I want you guys to understand today is the power of the spoken words, the words that you use every day. As you know, yes, I did banking, and yes, I work for the government now, but I'm here to speak to you about your subconscious mind, and also how you can program yourself to reach your goals. And I'm so happy that we're having this early this year, in January. You have enough time to, uh, to reach your goals, to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. So, you are all well familiar with the power of numbers. And you know how it works, right? Today, what I want you to focus on is the power of the words you speak. They're so powerful, these words that we speak. And the reason I say this is because your subconscious mind is programmed already since you were a child. And it's quite programmable right now. There's no such thing as I've always been doing this. This is just something people say to themselves to stay on a certain habit, habitual mind, right? They talk a lot about the subconscious, superconscious, unconscious, unconscious. Today I'm going to explain to you how all of this works regardless of these names that we put to them. What I'm going to tell you today is something that you're quite familiar with, but maybe you've forgotten. If you look at children, I'm sure some of you have interacted with children from the ages of zero till they get older, they graduate from university. No matter how many children you have, each and every one of them is unique, because we are all unique individuals. The way we see the world is different than anyone else. You have your own perspective, and as do I. And the reason we do this is because we have our own programs in the mind. The way we've been programmed is by our environment, external and internal. External environment is what exactly? What you see, movies, music you hear, people talk to you, your current environment. And internally, what happens is the way you get this data and you methodically recognize whether this makes sense or not. You analyze it. This is your conscious mind right now. You are listening to what I'm telling you and you're seeing if this makes sense or if it doesn't make sense. Is this logical? Is this illogical? What is she talking about these words? <laughs> And the reason I say this is because I'm talking to your subconscious mind as well. There are certain words that you're going to start to avoid. Words such as don't. The reason I say this is because when you tell a child don't touch this, what is the child doing? Touching, right? <laughs> or if you tell a child don't do that, they will do it. You're giving them a command to do something. Instead of telling them don't do something, tell them what you want them to do instead. If you're going out and you're telling them don't mess up the room, they will mess up the room. You're giving them a command to mess up the room. Instead of saying that, tell them, I'm going, play nice with your siblings, or watch TV and, you know, do, tell them exactly what you want them to do or what you expect from them to do. 
not what you don't want them to do, because that's what they're gonna do. So if you tell someone, don't worry, they're worrying. And if you tell someone, don't think, they're thinking. So focus, using the word don't, خلاص, we're gonna avoid that word. Okay, what I'm gonna talk to you about is the power of communication with your subconscious mind and with people around you. People generalize a lot. And I say people, generalizing. When you generalize, you literally tell your subconscious mind, this is exactly what's happening. It takes it literally, even though if it's not. You know about maybe eight million people in the world or seven million? When you tell yourself, everyone, your subconscious thinks it's really everyone, all of these billions of people. When a child comes to you and they tell you, everyone at school, they really think it's everyone. And so does your subconscious. People at that organization, people in my family, you really think it's everyone, but it's not. The stories you tell yourself, be careful of them. They're just stories. The only true moment is this moment right now. And from now, from today, you can start changing your program, your mind. When you do that, you see so many different possibilities in the world. Dubai is a prime example of that. The reason I say this is because we know during the financial crisis what happened. Burj Khalifa came out. The world was going through financial crisis, and so did we, and that's okay, but we came out with Burj Khalifa, right? Today it's, I think, 12 years old. During this crisis last year, we sent the Mars mission, right? We sent that probe. We're sending a probe, I think, or something. This year, and over the last year, we made the expo happen. Dubai is a prime example of how possibilities come true. So tell yourself, what is the goal that you've always wanted to achieve? For a few years, maybe. You never got the chance to do it. What stopped you? Ask yourself this. What really stopped me from achieving that goal? Whether it is reaching a certain corporate uh, the designation or having your own company or maybe losing weight or going to the gym and again the word losing your subconscious does not like to lose things because it spent time and money gaining gaining weight gaining the emotional turbulence about a certain story when you explain to yourself that these are just stories about the past, you can let go. Because when you become more powerful than your problems, they become very small and you can pass. Any problem you have, really, just look at it and see yourself from another perspective, from someone who already passed. You will pass. That's it. It's just a shift of the mind. You're not only a mind, you're also a body and a soul. The reason I say this is because how many of you felt occupied in the mind and while driving reached a certain destination? And you're like, oh, how did I reach here? This happened, right? Who was driving? Your subconscious. The subconscious main mission is to protect the host. And how it does that? By believing every story you tell it. And the stories are distorted. Whatever is happening right now is happening right now. Later, a month later, you meet me, you tell me, Fatma, remember when you were telling us this and this and that? And if it sounded smart, I say, yes, I remember. Maybe I didn't say it. Maybe you watched it in a movie later tonight and you linked it to me. But if I heard it sounding smart, I say, yeah, I remember. But maybe I don't. This is how distortive memories work. If you were at an event and something happened, the way you save it in your subconscious is different than the way the next person sitting next to you is saving it. Because we are unique individuals, and this is the beauty of life. Remember, it's so beautiful. And I'm not overly optimistic or overly positive, and the reason I say this is because I'm a realist. Being a realist has showed me so many different possibilities in life. Yes, I worked for the banking sector, and yes, I joined government right now, but I've always had this attitude that 
always whatever is coming is the, for the best. I'm learning every single day from everyone. And I'm learning right here sitting with you guys. I'm so happy to be here. So now we spoke about words. Pay attention to the words you use. Understand their power. Understand when children come up to you, they really believe what they're saying in their subconscious mind. That's why so many of them might overreact. When in fact, to them, this is not an overreaction. This is a real reaction to some idea they have. So what you know about yourself is really coming from different sources. It's either coming from your experience with others or from what your parents have told you, what your school teachers have told you, what your colleagues have told you. But who is the true you? Who is the true self, really? When you bring out all of this in paper, so you put down, this is what people think about me, this is who I am, this is who I think I want to be, you can go from a place where you are right here to wherever it is you want to be. Just recognize, recognize where you are right now. You can do it, it's January now, you have so much time. I am here, and that is where I want to be. And there are many ways of reaching there. It's not only the way you know. Maybe someone has already reached that place you want to go, so you ask them. But that's their own way. Your way is going to be a bit different. But knowing makes it even easier for you. I am sure your goals, what, whatever you want to reach, someone you know have already reached, right? If it was possible for them, then it's definitely possible for you. Definitely, 100%. There's no doubt about that. Again, remember the stories that you tell people. The more you focus on that story, the bigger it becomes. So your power is attention you give to stories. When you watch Netflix, or when you watch movies or TV shows or whatever, you're giving them your attention. By that, you make the beliefs programmed already in your subconscious mind. So remember your power of attention. Give it to the stories you want to happen in your life. What do I mean by that? If you go somewhere and you're with your family and you want to be at your best, you tell them, I really enjoy going out with you because I know you're always at your best. And it's so much fun. Focus on that. That's going to be your experience. If you think about past memories when everyone was loud and they were, you know, moving around things and not at their best behavior, then that's what's going to happen. Because you think about something and then it happens. When you focus on the good, the good gets better. When you focus on all the fears, you give it attention. So the fear comes real in your life. And there are two things you need to understand, really. What gives fear its power? It's you, your emotions and your feelings. What comes before a thought? Is it the feeling or is it the thought? You think about something and you react. Or you react to something and then you keep thinking about it and the stories and so many different things in the past, the movies and, and the music. So then what happens? You experience it every life. I understand the current circumstances may not be the best, the way we look at them, right? But there are so many different people living different realities right now. There are people still in lockdown. There are people who are traveling every single week. There are people who are experiencing the best moments of their lives right now. And that's all during the same time, right? So who do you want to be this year? What are the things you want to achieve this year? Remember, you have the power already. Everything you've done since childhood has brought you to this point right now. Now going forward, who do you need to be? Remember, it's about the who. Who do I need to be to, to come here and speak with you guys? Right? Who have I made myself be? It's always a choice. Life is all about the choices that you have. And it's not one, two choices. No, no, no. It's infinite numbers of choices. Infinite. And there's no number to infinity, right? So now you understand the words, some words not to use, some words to use. Use the words that you want to experience in life. If someone asks you, how are you? Say, I'm, I'm wonderful, I'm great. 
and you start feeling that. And in times when you're not feeling so good, also be honest with yourself. If someone asks me in a day when I'm like super uh, busy with the emails and the phone calls, someone asks me, how are you? I say, I've been better. I know I've been better and I want to become better. When you say it, you actually recognize it, whatever it is. When you recognize it, it doesn't become subconscious programming. Now you understand what's a program, right? I'll explain really quickly what's a program and what, what are beliefs and how they change. Imagine a child about the age of maybe one, first time sees fire like a candle, first time ever. And, and the child's mind is like, oh wow, what is this red thing that keeps on moving, right? I want to go and touch it. So this is the program. First, the perspective. They see the, the candle lit. And they're like, oh wow, they're so hypnotized by this angle, the, the candle. And then, they believe that they want to touch this thing because it looks so cool. But when the child goes and they touch the candle, the fire, it burns them. As soon as that happens, the program changes. The belief is like, oh, any candle thing with the red thing, that's, that hurts. I'm not going to do that. So this is how the program has changed. Perspective. You start with the perspective. How you see your colleagues is really how they, how they behave towards you. I'll give you a quick example about work. There's one colleague keeps telling me stories about the other colleague. And to me, the other colleague is very nice and pleasant with me, but then I saw their interaction, it wasn't very positive. It's because that person has ideas about the other person and they sense it. You sense each other, you sense energy. And when you do that, you respond accordingly. If I was thinking that, oh, I'm gonna come today and they're, not, they're all gonna be sleeping, they're not gonna pay attention, then that's what might have happened, right? But I came here super excited, I'm like, wow, I'm gonna learn from them and they're gonna learn, right? And I was thinking that way, and this is exactly what's happening. You're all giving me attention. You're giving me your power. So this is how it works. Whatever you think about the other person, ask yourself, how have I come to this thought about this person? Maybe that person is actually very pleasant. But because I put these ideas in my head, then that's the interaction. You always have the power to respond differently. How do you do that? You, you pause. When you pause, you give yourself a choice. How do I want to respond to this? I'll give you a quick example. This happens every day in your everyday life. One day I was going to work, and I always pass by this coffee place. I call them a few minutes before I come pass by. They bring out the coffee for me. On one day, I called them, and I was parking for more than 10 minutes. I was like, oh, they still didn't come out. I have a few choices. Either I honk, make noise, or I call them and say, hey, I'm out, you didn't come. Or number three, I can go down and just get myself the coffee cup, right? And as I was going down, I was thinking, oh, what? Uh, I don't think I have cash, but let me see which card might work. I was just thinking about that. And then I was like, what if I don't need to pay for coffee? That would have been nice, right? I was just thinking in my head, huh? So I go down. I saw the lady, she knows me, and she's, so, she's like, oh my God, it's Fatma, I'm so sorry, I forgot, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, no, it's okay, I'm here now. I will just order and I will go inside my car. She's like, okay. So when I ordered, I got the cup, but about to pay, she said, this time it's on us. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even have to pay for the coffee. <clears throat> so what's happened here? This simple example is exactly what I'm telling you guys. You have the power to respond differently. If I made noise, everyone's going to be, uh, you know, like, oh, who's this noisy car lady, right? Then my reaction is going to be different. If I call them and I'm like, hey, I'm outside, la la la, it's not going to be nice, right? So I chose the least, the one that would make the, the best thing for everyone. I went down. I didn't pay for coffee that day. So you always have a choice in the way you respond to things. When your children come to you, really listen to what they want you to they want you to hear. If your child comes to you and says, everybody at school, they don't like me. They really think that. So how you simplify it to them? Tell them, who is everybody?
send me? Is it person X, Y, Z, O? That's only three, that's not everybody. So then in their mind, it's like, oh, okay, not everybody, only these three. Maybe they don't like me, right? The same thing with yourself. If you tell, tell yourself, this happens every day. This always happens to me. This is generalizations, huh? This is not true. It doesn't every day happens to you, but it's just a story you tell yourself. And based on that story, this becomes your reality. I remember one of the clients I used to coach used to tell me, every time he goes to, the, to pay in the supermarket, the machine doesn't work. I was like, really? Every time? He said, uh, maybe out of 10 times, seven or eight times. I said, okay, so it's not every time, it's seven or eight times. Then I told him, if you keep saying the story, this would happen most of the time. He saw me the next time, he's like, it's, it's working now. I stopped believing that. He stopped believing that story of the machine not working. And then it started to work. Focus on what you want to happen, not what you are afraid of. Because when you focus on fear, that's what happens. Right? Same thing with health. We can all be the best healthy people that we know. But if we focused on, oh, if I eat this thing, it's going to harm me. It might harm you, yeah. But if you know someone who keeps eating this chocolate and they, don't, they never get fat, what's that about? Their belief is different. When they eat chocolate, they don't think it's going to make me fat. I eat chocolate for pleasure. I don't eat it and think I'm gonna gain weight. It's all about perspective, it's all about changing your perspective about things. When you change your beliefs, your reality change. Beliefs are not set in stone. You can change them. You've seen people turn their life around after traumatic experiences because that shocks, shocks the subconscious mind. And when you get shocked, your life changes. But you can do it in pleasant ways. You don't need to get shocked. You don't need to go through tra trauma to come out a different person. This is where we come in. We do hypnosis to the subconscious mind, go inside, change a few things, come back. You believe different things. The mind is so powerful. You are all miracle-making machines. Really, you're powerful. You need to understand how this power works with you and with others. I remember when I was telling you, you sense others' energy? You can notice this when you're in the elevator. And I'm sure a lot of ladies have noticed this. If you're sometimes in the elevator, you feel comfortable, it's okay. Sometimes you're not so comfortable, you're like, oh, this person is standing behind me. I don't want to be standing here. You don't know the person, but you sense energy. What does this mean? Does this mean that this person behind you is not so good? No. It just means that your energy is not compatible with that other person. We all have energy auras around us. Some people can sense them. And when I say ladies, it's because we are more attuned to this side of ourselves. But that might not be true. Maybe I'm generalizing. Maybe there are men who actually feel energy, and maybe they don't know how it, it works. But I'm sure all and each and every one of us has experienced this in our lives. And as such, what I want you to focus on today and the rest of the year and the years to come, inshallah, are the words you're choosing, the stories you're telling others. Notice how they impact you and notice how you, they impact others. Stop repeating the patterns. Stop repeating the stories. Change the story to be what you want to experience instead. Change it and really it would happen. I've experienced that in my life. I come from a very conservative family. And in my family, women my age and younger were not allowed to drive. We had drivers. One time I go to my parents and I'm like, I want to start driving. They said, no. They gave us another driver. I said, I don't want drivers. I want to drive it myself. They said, that's not possible. So I did not believe that and I did not become very uh, emotional. I wasn't emotional. I was like, okay, you know what? Let me start imagining I'm driving. Okay, I started imagining, and then for one day, my mom come to me, she's like, do you really want to drive? I said, yes. She's like, okay, you can go now, before I change my mind. And I was like, okay, good. So everyone in my family was so surprised that my mom would let me drive. 
As soon as I started driving, everyone else in the family from the ladies started to drive. And I know maybe you might be thinking, oh, this is Dubai, Fatma looks so open-minded, how come her family is like that? We are still very conservative, as you know this. Around the GCC, the, the UAE is the most conservative in terms of the, the Emirati culture and everything. We like to protect uh, ourselves and the ladies especially. But I'm so grateful for my parents. They taught me so many different things, especially my mom and dad. And another thing was, women were not allowed to travel by themselves. But I traveled to the US by myself. How did I do that? I did not believe what I was supposed to be programmed to believe. I did not believe that women are not supposed to go to the US by themselves. I actually, on two trips I went to the US, it was fully funded by someone else, like uh, the US State Department, another one was by Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. I didn't even have to pay for things because I changed my perspective, I changed my mind. And I got these opportunities, even speaking here with you guys. I actually, last year, I was just imagining speaking to a group of people, I didn't know who and where, I literally imagined this uh, carpet. Can you believe that? Thank you. And really, I'm so grateful because this is the power of the mind. And if I haven't proven that to myself, I wouldn't be able to speak to people and tell them, you know what? You can change your mind, you can change your perspective. And be very gentle with the way you speak to others about this specifically. Because they're so involved in their stories, they really believe this is what it is. I'm sure you met a lot of people who are quite emotional, and this is my story, this is my pain, this is me. How come you're telling me to let go of that? There is something called loss aversion. People don't like to lose what they've invested time and effort and money in, right? And if you tell them you can just change that, they're like, no, no, I don't believe that. That's my story, what are you talking about? But you now know you can. You can change the story, you can create your own story of what exactly I want to do in this life as an individual. Do I want to have a positive contribution? What kind of contribution? Because you know what goes around comes back around. You believe in karma, right? When I do something, then it comes back to me. So let me do good, and good will come back to me. And just let me trust that it will always happen the best way possible, the best way for me and for others. So now, everyone here, focus on what you want. Put your attention on the stories you want to have. Like think about, oh, I'm gonna travel with my family and it's gonna be the best time ever. Everything is gonna work in our favor. And just believe that. And that's gonna happen. And to conclude, what I want you to focus on right now is this moment, this present moment, when you have the power of choice. It's always in the moment, it's not tomorrow. It's not next year. It's this moment right now where I'm going to change the way I think about others, the way I think about myself, because I have the choice. And I've chosen all these years to believe certain things. Now I choose different. And I'm going to experience different things based on my programming, based on my beliefs, based on all the different things we talked about. Words, words are very powerful. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any kinds of questions? Yes. Uh, Fatima, thank you so much for uh, very, very interesting and very wise uh, uh, one, uh, one thing that always intrigues me is that how does one increase one's willpower? Willpower? Yes. Can you speak about that? Of course, yes. I can speak about willpower. <clears throat> when you ask me this question, was it your will to stand up and speak? Yes, of course. Yes. You already have willpower. How you increase willpower is based on your perspective. Will is always there. And it's so powerful. So you always have the will power. And how to increase it? I'll tell you something. The media wants you to believe certain things. The media wants people to believe that they are powerless, right? based on the ideas they broadcast. 
but you always have the power. How does marketing work? Marketing works by making people believe in certain things, desire, pleasure, all these kind of things, and they attract you as such. They're using your will, they're using your focus, your attention, as I spoke about. You're a man who went to Antarctica, right? I, I saw it, the picture you gave me early this morning. Yes, thank you. And that was your will to drive yourself to these different <coughs> continents that you've been to. You traveled the world. That was your will. How can one increase their willpower? By recognizing they're already so powerful. Only by having that will to stand, to sit, to think, to direct your thoughts to where you want to be. Direct your thoughts. Groom your mind to who you want to be. That is your power, really. You will hear a lot of people go on opera or on so many different channels that we see online. They talk about this imagination, vision. Sheikh Mohammed has an amazing vision and look at where Dubai is right now. Dubai is a prime example of what a city can be like and what it continues to be. Create that vision and remember, it's not only your willpower, it's also the universe's will for you to achieve what you want to achieve. <laughs> Thank you. And also I want you to, to think about surrendering to something that's so bigger than yourself. Because if I put everything on myself, then I'm, I, it feels like I'm carrying a lot of weight or a lot of um, thinking that I can achieve so many different things. That's ego. Ego comes in, ego is good because it makes you achieve things. But then there's another part of ego that is, oh, this is mine, this is me, I'm gonna get myself there. No, I work with the universe to reach where I want to be. Next question, please. Yeah, yeah Fatma, much as Jane here. Uh, so thank you for sharing your holistic thought this morning. I mean, it's the first season of the year and such you know, pleasant uh, feeling that I'm experiencing now. Uh, I have a question for you. I mean, you're so young, you're educated, you're an ex-banker like me. Do you have some kind of a spiritual guru as such that you follow? Uh, where you sort of, you have this passion of knowing and talking about life and wellness. How do you sort of inculcate all of this into your lifestyle? Yes, uh, okay. Yeah, so some, you know, most of us as Indians, we do follow some of these principles listening to some uh, learned people. Yes. But as far as you're concerned, do you have one of those? So I have many. I don't prescribe to one. <laughs> so the way I think about life, uh, Nasser is one of them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nasser is really my mentor and my good friend who has helped me recognize so many different things. And when you think about one person, to me, that might be limiting myself. That's just my experience. I think about all the powerful people that came along this life. I read so many different books. I've read Sadhguru, I've read Osho, I've read so many different people. And I've read, uh, recently I've read a book by a monk and it was really nice. And I've also read other kinds of books. I've read um, all kinds, right? And when you give yourself that expansive resourcefulness, you get attuned to different things and then you realize they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. They're all saying you have the power, they're all saying change your perspective, your world will change. So start doing that. So maybe look at other different things. Look at things that you might be against. The reason I say this is because it opens up your thinking. If I was really against that thought, I'd be like, how, how do I know I'm against that thought form? Have I learned it somewhere? Maybe someone told me something. Let me experience, let me become more adventurous. The things that you think about, they came from somewhere, right? They came either from your experience or from someone telling you something. So remember that it's always within you to look at different things. and. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that everything is happening because I'm thinking about certain things, I'm attracting certain things, the way I'm at NASA, for example, very interesting way, right? So it's, it's very different. The way you think about things, they just come into your life. 
Yes, I worked in Citibank, and yes, now I work for Dubai Economy and Tourism. And they're, it feels like they're different words, but maybe they weren't. One thing led to the other, and who knows what's next, right? I'm here with you guys now. I met Mr. Narendra, who made this possible. Thank you so much, and the chapter team and everyone. Uh, but yeah, this is like when you open your perspective, your life will change, definitely. It's, it's always been changing. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Happy morning to everybody. Uh, so wonderful to hear you in person in front of our chapter. I was thankful to know you and connect with you. And when I spoke to you, I felt that my chapter member should come and get a chance to hear you. Because at young age, the words what you use, the way you talk, the way you guide is amazing. Thank so you. thankful to you. One word I, I will tell everybody to accept in life, because I follow a guru nowadays. <coughs> he says acceptance is the most important thing in life. If we accept, everything will be cool and calm around you. Because we react, the things become difficult. So if we stop reacting, the things will start happening. So use your heart more, I believe, nowadays. Please guide me on that, than using your mind. So if I'm correct or wrong, please guide me on Definitely, that. definitely. Use your acceptance and pause. Accept that the things the way they are. Pause and respond instead of react. We don't use the word react. It's because your reaction can be anything. It could be a wave of super conscious, subconscious coming through, right? So instead of reacting, respond. When you tell yourself, you know what, I can respond to any event that happens in life. And how I do that is by taking a pause, anything, anything that happens, taking a pause, accept. Accept that things are the way they are. Think differently about them, different perspectives. Ask, hear, listen to what others are saying. Listen to what they're going through. You will definitely change your perspective. But definitely, yes, we have the power of acceptance. Accept whatever it is. Accept this moment right now. And accept that you can make the change you want to see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add and say thank you so much for your talk. And that mm. I believe nothing is a coincidence. And us being here today and listening to this is not a coincidence. And I'm grateful for what you taught us today. Thank you so much, Sabina. Thank you so much. Hi, good morning. Uh, first of all, I thank, uh, thank you, thank you. You have a very positive energy in this ballroom. Uh, and all. I want to ask one question uh, where you from started. So you started with that in something happened to our life, something bad, you just tell you said, after suffering from trauma, your cause, something happened, and we came from our trauma, and then we changed our life. So without changing it, how we can change our life? Like for example, if anybody wants to do something good or big, then if certain things bad happen to them, then they, some people can do generally achieve what they are not able to achieve in general way, yes. in general ways. Yes, I understand. So I, I explained before, it doesn't have to be trauma to change, yeah. but some people attract trauma to change and wake up. Some of, some of my clients, are going forward with the same program, right? I cannot help someone who does not want help. Unless they seek help, then they can be helped, right? And they can do it by themselves or through the help of others. The reason I say this is because sometimes people need to wake up. How they wake up is through trauma, right? Or through hypnosis, hypnotherapy, NLP, all kinds of words, Reiki, so many different things. And Experiencing Sorry. negative stuff is also part of life, and it's okay. When you accept the negative, then you're fine, really, because you will always pass. No one hasn't experienced negative stuff, right? When I was earlier in my 20s, I was going through life thinking in a certain way. I studied finance, I want to be the best uh, CFA person, I tried to take the CFA, and I thought that was my life. But when I experienced failure, I failed the, that exam, I was like, you know what? I've never really experienced failure before, but this is teaching me something. Maybe 
it's telling me I don't need to take this path because it's not for me. When you're okay with failure and you see it as learning, then your life changes, really. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. No, how we can do ourselves, how to... How to change your, your how mind? Yourself? Like, how do you help yourself? Yeah. Okay, first, you understand who you are right now. Number one, you write down, who am I? You write down all of the ideas you have about yourself. Who do I want to be? You write out all the ideas I want. How do I go from here to there? What belief do I need to change? You start by recognizing the program. You recognize the belief. Yesterday I saw The Matrix. And I, I don't know if you guys are, uh, know this movie, but it's one of the most powerful movies, The Matrix. And the reason I say this is because it talks about so many different things in life. Is it destiny or is it choice? How do you know? You don't. You just go on life choosing differently. I chose to wake up early this morning. Usually I choose to wake up late and it's always a choice. I choose to be here and to speak. I choose to think the way I'm thinking. I choose to think that every time I go to Dubai Mall, I will find the parking next to the door. And I do. <laughs> choose to think differently. Choose to give yourself that power that you already have. Recognize it. Know that whatever it is I'm going through right now, I'm going to pass it. What ideas am I going through? Nasser helped me really well and he told me something. All your thoughts, put them down on paper. When you put them down on paper, you see them. When you see them, they're not so powerful anymore. You become more powerful than that. Then you have a choice to respond differently. And if you have any more questions? Just a little to add something to what you said earlier. concentrates on the obstacles which are coming in between the trees or the rocks or something, he will never reach the, he will never reach down. Rather, he will only concentrate on the road, he, I mean, the path he wants to go. And, of course, on the back of his mind, these obstacles also on his mind, but he always concentrates on his path. So, it is more important to concentrate on the path. 100%. This morning, if I didn't put the location to come here, I would have wandered around Dubai, going to so many different places. So you instruct your mind towards where you want to go. Have a destination always. I tell myself that this year I want to go to a place I've never been to. I say the word, what place is it? I want to go to Italy. I've never been to Italy. Okay, I put myself a destination. Do I really need to put in every single other details? Not necessarily. I don't need to get involved in all the details. When you're skiing, you're just skiing. You're just going in the moment, right? You're reaching a destination. If, you, if your mind goes around, oh, this and that and this and here, you're not going to focus on reaching your goals. That's your power, as I said. Your power is your attention, your focus, your concentration, your willpower of reaching to your destination. When you have distractions, recognize that it's a distraction. I can choose to watch Netflix or answer my emails, right? And sometimes I choose Netflix because I want to watch movies or TV shows. I choose a distraction on purpose. But I don't get consumed by it because I recognize what it's doing to my mind. It's taking away my power of attention and focus. While I'm studying, others could be playing, but what am I trying to achieve? If you haven't taken the test you've taken, you're not gonna be part of this chapter, right? You had a destination to reach. You wanted to be a chartered accountant. You wanted to be part of this community. You wanted to do your exams, whether it's CPA or CFA or ACCA or whatever, right? So many different things and you have reached, what's next? And to each of us, our potentials are not limited to what we are right now, and we can explore many ways, in, not just in the same way that we go, we can always change the paths as well. There is, I recently read somewhere, there is a person who was in the army, who was an astronaut, and also a, an entrepreneur. So it is, not, uh, it is not bad to change the path, that is also good, you can be an all-rounder. Definitely. I don't know, like, if I have a goal, I have a timeline. Yeah, I make this. And I'm just like, how do I not, not hammer myself? And how do I keep myself motivated and program my mind to achieve what I want to do? Can you 
Definitely. Accept. Accept that you missed the deadline, and that's fine. Ask yourself, what is my priority? If your priority is towards other things, then one thing or the other is going to be missed, right? When you're clear about your priorities, you reach your goals. And you mentioned the word punishment. Punishment, we learned at school. We used to be punished. We learned at home. When we're naughty, we get punished, right? As adults, you need to understand the power that you have can go beyond the carrot and stick. It can go beyond, I do something nice, I reward myself. I do something not nice, I punish myself. How long are we going to continue this cycle of reward and punishment? It can work for a while. It can teach children to behave well, right? But as an adult, I need to understand what are my priorities. And it's okay if I miss something. We're all human. If you are forgiving yourself, you are going to reach your goal, whatever it is, whatever it may be. So you start by number one, accept the current reality, forgive, and move on. Go towards it, whatever it is that you want to be. Understand that this carrot and stick mentality worked for some time. It can still continue to work. But what do I want to achieve? Focus on what you want instead. Recognize your priorities and move forward. This is how to move forward. Uh, can you throw some more light on the hypnosis and hypnotherapy? Of course, yes. So hypnosis and hypnotherapy you're all being hypnotized right now. You're giving me your attention. <laughs> so how it works is that focus concentration is really hypnosis. And how you can change your mind through hypnosis is by understanding what puts you in a trance. We keep saying this all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And how we help others is taking them out of a trance that they've been put themselves in through the stories. What are the stories you tell yourself because you're hypnotized by that story? When you watch a movie and you laugh with them, it's not real, but you're just laughing with them, you're hypnotized. When you hear a story and you sympathize and empathize and you're crying with the lady who's crying with you, you're also hypnotized by that story. So you need to understand the power of hypnosis, the power of your attention. When you're working your numbers in, the, uh, in accounting or whatnot, you are focused on the numbers because if you miss your focus, you're going to miss a number or two. It's going to mess up the whole balance. So this is what you need to understand. We are always in a trance. We're hypnotized. We're being hypnotized right now. When you look at something and you are like, oh, wow, this thing. When you're passing by shopping mall or something, marketing hypnotizes us all the time. So this is the way of going forward. It's not something from the, the magic world. The world is already magical, it also works like magic. But when you are in a trance, you are just focused. You're focused on this thing that you're looking at. You're, you're, you're hearing it. You're smelling a perfume or something. You're hypnotized. Your senses play into this program that you're receiving or play into this reality that you're hearing. So definitely everyone is hypnotizable. We are all being hypnotized and we've been hypnotized before. And so hypnosis is just a way of to let go of certain things, past trauma, let go of certain behaviors that you don't want to continue living, change your perspective, change your mind. It's so powerful, really. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions and if you would like, we, we can do that as well. Uh, but that's separate because it's one person focusing on certain things to achieve a certain goal. You have a strategy to reach somewhere, and we can guide you as hypnotherapists to reach that case. And I think one last question, and then we move to laughter yoga. Thank you, Fatima. An amazing and informative session, especially someone like me who has a young kid. It is very important that we give choices to the kids today so that they know what they're choosing and where we falter. One thing I want to ask you, we as chartered accountants have worked very hard every time we go for an attempt. Everything that we do so that we pass. And, and finally the results are something else. And then we say, oh, the a luck factor did not support us. Do you believe in luck? You can make your own luck. 
And I believe that because you put effort into something, you can achieve what you want to achieve. The reason we don't get what we want is because there is some other learning here. The learning is basically to understand how can I do it better? Like for me, when I attempted the CFA exam, right? I was studying on weekends, I was studying at night. A few months I was just studying and studying and attempting so many different tests. And I had a belief. The belief was maybe only 10% would pass. Okay, do I want to be one of those 10% that passes? I was thinking on so many different things. What people tell me, I believed. Right? I was programmed to believe that it's so hard, uh, only 10% pass, and who am I to pass this exam? Do I really want to be part of this? And then, when I attempted the first time, I didn't get the desired outcome because of these thoughts that I kept having about myself. And I, I was thinking that no matter how much I study, you know what, maybe I'm not gonna pass. Right? But I'm setting myself to failure by thinking that way. So. And then, when I got the results, I was the, the one of the top uh, batch, something like that. Anyways, uh, they told me, if you try it again, you might pass. Then I paid again, I took the classes, but I stopped myself before taking the exam. I said, you know what? This is not something I want to do, really. After investing money, investing time and effort, I decided, Hala, I don't want to do this. Because really, in my heart, I didn't want to do that. So recognize what is it that you want to achieve. I wanted to achieve it just for sake of achieving. I am a high achiever, I like to achieve things, and sometimes recognizing that achieving just for the sake of achieving wasn't good for me. I was putting myself into so many different things just to take and achieve and put the paper in like, hey, for me it was quite different. So you need to really understand, does, is it something you really want? Think about the mind, heart, body, soul, all these kind of experiences. Is it something I really want? And what's stopping me from doing that? You can visualize the results that you want. You can visualize, oh, um, I'm so happy and I'm writing down to my friends and they're telling me congratulations. Think like that. I didn't think like that when that happened. But when I was planning my trip to the US, I was thinking I'm in Washington already and I went. So think, think exactly what you want to happen experiment with it, it might work, it might not work. It's not a 100% guarantee thing, right? Life is quite uncertain, and this is so beautiful because it's uncertain. If I knew everything that's gonna happen after today, I'm gonna get bored. They'll be like, oh, okay, if I know what's gonna happen. I don't want that, I want uncertainty, I want not to know, right? So definitely think about what you want in a positive manner, and let go of all the programming that we've been programmed to believe. Thank you, Fatma, for being with us. Fatma, for an amazing session. I mean, and I hope by now we have learned how to shift our paradigm. And don't use the word don't. Always be positive. And whatever like uh, you think or speak, whether whenever it is negative, please don't speak. Because once you speak, then you give the life to that word and that will happen for sure. So please always think positive and it will work in your favor. Can, now I would like to invite our chairman. What I learned is think realistic. Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Now I would like to invite our chairman C.A. So we will learn your vice chairman C.A. Nunaan Chaturini to present a memento on behalf of the ICI Guru chapter oh, so as a token of appreciation. Please. Uh, you have been around over three years. Miracle in Building Mission, that is what we are. I, I love uh, some of the words uh, Padma used, I have noted down. And uh, after going, I will try to relay this to you know whoever I am speaking to. Uh, so I request you not to wear your mask. Don't wear your mask. You know the reason why I am telling you, because they want you to wear your mask. <laughs> Uh, he started searching something to help people 
Thank you, Fatima, for a wonderful talk. I happen to be a hypnotist, so I want to start with activating your mind, giving you a bit of an experience of how hypnosis might work for yourselves, for your wives, for your children. <laughs> At the end of the day, it is about using your mind. Think right, feel right, think wrong, feel wrong. It is how it works. So. Um, uh, if you will, if you're sitting down, if you're comfortable enough, if you happen to be standing, don't worry, you'll be like a tree, nice and, uh, nice and solid. It's only going to take less than a minute to make you feel really good. So if you want to play this game, take a minute with me. Take a nice deep breath in and close your eyes. <clears throat> and then imagine a face, any face you like. Just imagine, visualize, picture, pretend, see somebody looking at you, making eye contact with you, smiling to you, and smile back. Do smile. There are some mm -hmm. empty chairs here, so people can come also forward here. Yeah, because we have a lot of so that was 10 seconds, and what I want you to do is open your eyes, and then close your eyes again, another nice deep breath in. Because I said it takes less than a minute, but really it takes less than 30 seconds. So imagine a face, any face you like. Notice the eye contact. This person is looking at you, smiling to you. And then smile back. Feel good. It's a positive feedback mechanism. It always works. Open your eyes. You see, in hypnosis, the idea is repetition is the mother of all skill. So we'll do that one more time. I did say we'll take a minute. So you know what you're doing, It do it even better. Take a deep breath in, close your eyes. Imagine a face, any face you like, smiling to you. Notice the eye contact. Imagine, visualize, picture, pretend, smile back. 
feel good. The better you feel, the more you smile, the more you smile, the better you feel. It really takes a very short time to instantly give you a feel-good feeling. Open your eyes. And you might wonder and think, when can I use this? Why can I use this? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. It takes like 10 seconds. Let me show you how it becomes even more fun. Close your eyes. Imagine your favorite faces. And this time, they're looking at you. You notice the eye contact. You smile, they smile. You smile more, they smile more. They smile more, you smile more. It turns into a chuckle. It's cheeky. In your own mind, I wonder if you can hear their voices laughing, <coughs> or ha ha ha, or ho ho ho, or he he he. And the more you smile, the more it feels good, the more they smile in your imagination. Positive feedback loop, feel good. Okay, open your eyes. So that was a small little trick, party trick on top of the laughter yoga. Laughter yoga is what I want you to really get good at today, to really get the experience of, because laughter is the best medicine. And laughter yoga started in 1995, and it was started by a medical doctor. So that means it was experimented on, people's vital signs were taken, they measured their spit and blood. You know, we're not going to do any of that here today. We'll just assume everything they did was trustworthy, okay? Laughter yoga, 10 minutes of laughter is exercise. Belly um, laughter from the belly um, will burn 30 to 50 calories in 10 minutes. We plan to go for 30 minutes, so get ready. We're going to be laughing. We're going to be exercising. It's called yoga because it brings in the breathing exercises from yoga, okay? So belly breathing, very important concept. Let's make sure you know how to do it so that we can do laughter yoga together. Place your hand or hands on your belly. As you inhale, it's a balloon. Fill up the belly. As you exhale, relax the belly. Belly breathing, we'll do this a couple of more times. There's three sounds, ha, ho, and he. So deep breath in. Fill the balloon and ho. Oh, let go of the balloon. Very good. And then fill that balloon again, and he, very good, very good. When you're laughing, you laugh from the belly. When you're breathing, you breathe from the belly. It's a principle of yoga. It's as old as time. Breathing relaxes the body. It activates a parasympathetic nervous system, and you physically force yourself to calm down and relax. Okay? But laughter yoga is not about calming down and relaxing. Laughter yoga is about laughing. So to be able to do laughter yoga, I need to know that you can laugh. And there are three laughter sounds that you need to be able to do. And they are ha ha ha, ho ho ho, he he he. So I'm going to count one, two, three, and then all together we're going to make the three laughter sounds. Ready? One, two, three. Ha ha ha, ho ho ho, he he he. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> you see, laughter yoga is not um, the same as using comedy. In comedy, you notice something, you understand it, you think it is funny, and then you start laughing. It's a top-down approach, and it's very healthy. It's, it's very good. Laughter is good for you. It lowers your blood pressure. It um, increases, uh, lowers your cortisol. It regulates your heart rate, it does a whole bunch of things. Even your um, productivity indicators start to increase in your KPIs, like you know, focus and concentration and, and self-efficacy, all this kind of stuff. But um, the idea is in laughter yoga, you start with the body first. You see, the secret is the mind doesn't differentiate between real laughter and fake laughter. If I just start to fake my laughter, and I just keep at it with a bit of persistence, and I'm a hypnotist, so I'm a very persistent person. Fake laughter very quickly turns into real laughter. Scientifically speaking, it takes less than a minute, and I'm an experimenter, so watch me laugh. <laughs> and 
and it does take less than a minute for fake laughter, especially in a wonderful group like this, to become real <laughs> contagious laughter. <laughs> So if you're not really feeling the laughter, all I have to invite you to do is to fake it. In laughter yoga, you fake it, you will make it. The secret is eye contact. So I will have you interacting with each other for this. And um, before we start the laughter yoga exercises, I need to be able to um, be sure that you um, can follow my instructions. So everybody raise your left arm. Good enough, put it down. I just want to know you can follow instructions. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, the elements of laughter yoga, the elements of joy, they are laughter, they are dancing and singing and clapping. We're just going to stick to the clapping. I have a microphone in my hand. I hear this is going on YouTube, so I'm not ready for my stage breakout yet. Laughter I'm used to. So clapping. You're going to be able to clap in laughter yoga when we clap, just like in real, in, in real yoga, just like in traditional yoga. You bring all the fingers together. You want to get all the, in, uh, the energy points. Okay. So there's a rhythm. We clap in in laughter yoga. It goes like this. One, two, one, two, three. 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 Get that energy going. Really clap. Yep. Get that energy. Yep. I like it. And now we add to it. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Really get that energy going. So now it's ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Clap while doing it. I can't clap. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Now, turn to each other instead of looking at me. Look at each other and continue doing that. Faster. 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 Okay, okay, very good, very good, very good. You can follow the instructions. We're getting our energies running. Um, oh, this is important. Um, for the laughter exercises, there are a simple event of monkey see, monkey do, or Simon says, depends what you like to call the game. Okay, so I'll be monkey do, y'all can be monkey see, and then we'll do the same exercises together. But between the exercises, we're going to do a very unique break. It's called childlike playfulness. Okay, so in each of us there's a little child and we're going to connect with it. It's like this, we're going to clap and chant and we're going to say, very good, very good, yay. So I'm going to put my microphone down, we're going, I'm going to demonstrate it and then we'll do it together. Watch the energy, okay? Very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay! <coughs> okay, so I'll count one, two, three, everybody do very good, very good, yay with me. One, two, three. This gets much more fun. Wait, wait. Okay, so now turn to each other. <laughs> turn to each other, and we'll make this quick and painless. Do the same energy. I'll count one, two, three. One, two, three. Very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay! <laughs> okay, okay. That's enough. <clears throat> okay, okay. Attention back here. Attention back here. Let's start um, with some proper laughter greetings. So this is called the laughter namaste. I don't have to teach you how to namaste or namaskar each other, so hands together, look at each other, make your eye contact. In laughter yoga, we only laugh, we do not speak. So do the full respect, look at somebody in the eye and ha 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 ho 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 ho
<laughs> very good. So because we're already sweating in between exercises, very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay! All right, let's just stick to two times. <laughs> this group is wild. Okay, very good, very good, yay! Two times only. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's other ways to greet each other, of course. Um, we're in Corona time, so we won't do handshake laughter, but we will do like you're meeting somebody who's coming from far away, the hand wave laughter. Okay, so um, hand wave to me, hand wave to each other. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 When you make eye contact with somebody, you might as well pretend even better. <laughs> okay. Very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay! Two times, two times, excited kiddos, excited kiddos. Okay. So, the secrets of laughter yoga. Fake it till you make it, your brain doesn't differentiate between real laughter and fake laughter. Um, make eye contact, it makes it a lot easier to actually laugh. And don't talk, this is a respectful place for laughter, laughter only. If you want other people to laugh, just make eye contact with them, laugh. If they're not laughing, perhaps they're shy. Try shy laughter, and shy laughter it looks like this. <laughs> Try some shy laughter with each other. <laughs> when you make eye contact, you break. <laughs> shy laughter. Very good, very good. Yay! Very good, very good. And you know, it's important to lose uh, laughter yoga to learn the life skills. I am a psychologist after all, so you know, in life, um, sometimes you're just sitting there doing your own thing, you know, maybe working on your numbers or whatever. Then a family member, a loved one, perhaps a total stranger just walks up to you and tells you that something is wrong with who you are or what you're doing. You know how it is, right? It happens. So, while you're gathering your thoughts, you can remember this. This is called naughty, naughty laughter. And what we do is we wag our fingers. Everybody wag your fingers at me. All right? And as if you're saying naughty, naughty, and you start laughing. <laughs> oh. And of course, you know the nature of these interactions. <laughs> you know the nature of these interactions. You know, you're sitting there and trying to figure out who is this person, what do they want. I'm sure there's a good reason they're here explaining to me how I'm wrong and what I'm doing is unsatisfactory, you know. And, um, you know, the conversation is complicated. Sometimes people say things that's out of line, you know. And, um, and then if, if you have good sense or if, you, or if you're polite enough, maybe if you're well raised, it's time for an apology, right? You know, and here's apology laughter. I heard um, in, in India when you apologize, you do this cross thing where you grab your ears, right? 
Who, who in school was made to do this? Naughty, naughty argument, <laughs> laughter. Naughty, naughty arguments. You apologize to each other. Then it's forgiveness time, forgiveness, laughter. Usually we'd have each other embrace each other, but you know, um, social distancing and whatnot. Let's just do open arms, laughter like this, as if you're holding each other and embrace forgiving each other. <laughs> You know, um, it is worth appreciating um, when somebody takes time out of their life to come and intrude onto your life and tell you that something that you do or who you are is not satisfactory. It means they really care about you for one reason or another. So it's worth appreciating. And this is appreciation laughter. Thumbs up to each other. Look left and right. <laughs> 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 very good, very good. Very good, very good. Very good, very good. <laughs> you know, through the argument, through the apologies, through the forgiveness, through the whole construct, you begin to learn things. You learn things about yourself. For example, you learn to laugh at yourself, point at yourself and start the heartiest laughter. too and sometimes through the discourse through the reflections of others and their behaviors and sometimes what they care about you can become a guru yourself for yourself and this is guru laughter so right hand on top of your head and say I learned from my mistakes ha 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 <laughs> left hand on top of your head I learned from others mistakes ho 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 and then start laughing. Very good, very good, yeah. Very good, very good, yeah. And when you learn to appreciate others despite their differences with you, you can begin to learn to appreciate yourself, perhaps. So everybody do a nice big self-hug. Nice big self-hug. Mm. Caress yourself well, with, I hope you can remove that from YouTube. I meant hug yourself. <laughs> Rub up and down gently and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want you to do really is take a moment to laugh with each other for no reason for about a minute we're just going to laugh we're going to look at each other in our tables in the following table Pick your favorite laps, it doesn't matter. Just do the ha ha ha, ho ho ho, he he he. Be as convincing or not convincing as you want. Make eye contact with several people. 
make sure to laugh with them. And what I want you to do is remember the faces because we'll revisit this whole idea of hypnosis and imagining smiling faces. So look. <laughs> 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 Do milkshake laughter. Everybody with your right hand hold an imaginary cup. With your left hand, fill it with karak. Make a vowel sound. A with your left hand, grab another imaginary cup. Mix your karak. Four times. <laughs> Enjoy your karak. Laugh when you drink. Ah, careful, it might be hot. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath in. Let it go with a sigh. Just begin to relax. Another deep breath in, close your eyes. Let's revisit this idea of hypnosis. The power to feel good for no reason, anytime, just because you can imagine, visualize, picture, pretend now in your mind any face smiling, looking at you, smiling to you, smile back. And when you smile back, you'll notice they smile more. And it builds this positive feedback loop. And I wonder if you can hear the sounds of these people specifically. Is it chuckling or laughing? A nice deep breath in, and this time in your mind, they're doing laughter yoga with you. Pick the people. It doesn't have to be just one. Here's the secret. Eye contact. And make it happen. Smile back, laugh, even in your imagination. Feel good. It's a positive feedback loop. Anytime, any place, for any reason, less than 10 seconds. Come back, open your eyes, feel fantastic. <clears throat> and usually to end, I do a humming meditation. So a humming meditation, hum. Basically what I like to do is three times, three rounds, a deep breath in, a good belly breath. And then I hum until I do not have any air left in me whatsoever. And I do that three times, okay? First time, eyes open. Second time, eyes closed. Third time, eyes closed, ears blocked. Cool? One, two, three, deep breath in. Hum.
Deep breath in, close your eyes. Remember to smile. Hum. with yourself. Remember to smile in your mind. Close your ears, close your eyes as long as possible. Deep breath in. Hum. Very good, yay! Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Really, it was an amazing uh, session. We really enjoyed it. And uh, now I would like to invite our chairman, Sri Sundar Nurani. So are you conducting classes here in Dubai as well or Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi is online and I will come to Dubai if I have a class. Okay, that's nice of you. Thank you very much. Uh, now I request our chairman and our earlier speaker, Fatma, as well. Uh, to present a moment on behalf of the ICI Dubai chapter to Mr. Nasir Al Riyami. I can invite, please come. Our ECFO member as well, CA Jabrakas Agarwal and Amit Khetan as well. And Narendar, Narendar Loya ji, please come on the stage. Or uh, we can have our first uh, formal vote of thanks by Amit C. Amit Khedan. Later on, we can have a group photo. Before we say Yeah, please. Thank Fatma to connect us to Nasser also. I think she has done a great introduction to our chapter. I think we will be living with you more longer. Wonderful. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, uh, C. Harikishan ji, for uh, giving the opportunity of word of thanks. I think being thankful for what we have and what we gained in our life is the most beautiful thing. So, <clears throat> thanks to both of our speakers of today's event, Fatma Al Mari and Nasser Al Riyami. Thanks for giving a good start of the year with your thought provoking sessions and insights. And I'm sure that our member <clears throat> will make most out of it. And we are already in a state of hypnotization, I think, right? So that's what we are doing. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Very good, very good. Very good, very good. Yeah, so because, see, I'm already in a state of hypnotization, so from very good to wonderful, right? And uh, one thing I want to say that, like, you know, uh, to our members, that what we, I have learned from the session, that change what can be changed and accept what cannot be changed and get away what cannot be accepted. But keep yourself happy and keep your laughter alive. And uh, thanks to all our sponsors for always supporting us, our principal sponsors, Tally, Lulu, Danube Home, and uh, Platinum sponsors, UHY James, IFCO, HLB Hamt, Media Partner, Khalis Times, Institutional Partner, uh, Delhi Private School, and uh, Banking Partner, Bank of Baroda. At the end, thanks to all our members for attending and uh, making this event successful. I wish you a great weekend ahead, indeed the new weekend ahead, and enjoy the UAE's winters, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.